All right, so what we're looking at here is uh, an Endeavor pipeline. Uh, and what I'm gonna show you is the setup that we have to ensure that the software supply chain security um, principles that we've just talked about are applied in a mainframe uh, native pipeline in a tool managed like Endeavor. So uh, we can see over here, these are the processors that are configured for Endeavor. And what we're looking at here is actually a processor for a new type called a manifest. Uh, and the processor effectively creates an SBOM. So the manifest defines the application, and when you generate it, uh, it runs a utility called SBOMZ that makes the manifest. And that actually works with both team build and um, Endeavor. And over here, we have the move processor, and over here you can see we're doing policy checks. So what we do is uh, on move, we, we call out to check to see if any policies have been not satisfied and then block the move. And actually all those policies are coming from a GitHub repo, which is not part of Endeavor, it's presumably managed by our compliance team. Uh, and in it, we have um, policies that are specified in a language called Rego, which are used with uh, an open source tool called Open Policy Agent. And over here, you can see we have a policy that checks to see uh, if the right versions of our, um, of, our, of our application are being distributed uh, during the move. Okay, so that's the sample. We do basically a generate of our manifest, and then uh, if it doesn't match later, uh, the SBOM uh, will block the move. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a small change uh, to Slick PD as part of our Slick Oil home heating uh, company. So I'll make a small change over here to one of our transactions. And uh, so all well and good, it generates, nothing special there. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go over to our application manifest, which has that new uh, type with the new processor that creates the SBOM. And I'm going to uh, just have a quick look at the manifest here. You can see uh, it defines the application. So there, there's the application name, the version. You can see we, we have our key that signs our SBOM to make sure it can't be tampered with. And we define the location where all of the files for our application are. So that manifest describes our um, file and generating it creates the uh, bill of materials for the application. So I'm gonna go ahead and generate it. And when that's completed, we will have an SBOM as one of our uh, output components, which we can then look at. So let's go ahead and look at the output components. And over here, you can see there's the SBOM for our application for our home heating oil company. You can see it's using the Cyclone DX format, and it's created with a bunch of metadata that was pulled from Endeavor. So basically, uh, I'm defining all of the files that are part of my application at the time of the build. Okay, and that's what I'm going to use to check uh, the policies against. And in fact, whenever I generate it, it pushes that data into Open Policy Agent's uh, evidence store. So uh, that's used as part of the check. All right, so I've created the SBOM, I've created a small change. Now I'm going to uh, go ahead and put on the hat of another developer who maybe goes in and makes another change. Uh, unbeknownst to me, and uh, maybe this is a bad actor, maybe this is somebody who's just making a mistake, but the point is, that by making this other change, I'm no longer going to have a match uh, in the SBOM because I'm not gonna regenerate the manifest. And so what I would expect from this is when I package this up and try to do a promotion, the move processor that checks the policies will fail and prevent the move from happening. So we'll go ahead now and we'll uh, create an Endeavor package, which represents us moving through the um, life cycle. So I'll, I'll create a package. We'll call it uh, Software Supply Chain Security Package 1. Give it a quick description. All right. And once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and build the package actions. So I'm going to do moves. Basically, I'm going to promote my um, manifest along with the change that I've made. So the manifest again represents the latest version of the code and the output component is the SBOM that goes with it. And now I'm gonna go in and, and uh, you know, package up and move the load module. So there we go, we've created our package. And of course, now we can go ahead and cast the package. And uh, so there we go, let's go ahead and do a cast operation. And we can see that the cast was successful. And now all that's left to do is execute the package. Now, as I mentioned, I fully expect this to fail because again, somebody's changed uh, the, the, one of the files so it no longer matches what's in the SBOM. Uh, and again, that could be a bad actor, could be, simply be a mistake. And as expected, we've got a return code 12. 
Uh, if we go up through the output, we should be able to find out where the SBOM was generated, and then we can actually check the policy messages and see what policies were failed. So in just a sec here, there we are, public Vega uh, auto, slick, slick. So let's go ahead. I've actually got that location open uh, in my screen. So we'll enter in here. We'll go and browse that location. And there is the policy messages along with the actual SBOM. And we can see there's the policy failure that we expected. The version no longer matches the one that was expected in the SBOM. So working uh, as designed. All right, and there you go. You can see the policy here, that uh, the actual policy that stopped it. So that's, the, uh, that's a mainframe native pipeline uh, and just an example of how you can uh, prevent code from moving forward when it shouldn't. So let's go ahead now and actually redo that. We're going to go ahead and uh, reset the package. Uh, and now what we can do is we can go and regenerate our manifest so that our SBOM actually matches the application. So in this case, it wasn't a bad actor. It's just a mistake. We want to regenerate the manifest and uh, go forward with our package. So we simply uh, go into our inventory, generate. There we go. We've created a new um, SBOM from the manifest. And uh, it's the same package SCL. So we should be able to just go through and recast. So let's recast the package and uh, then execute it. And this time I fully expect that the package will uh, bring the code forward and, and execute successfully. So let's see what happens. There we go. And you can see the execution was successful. Uh, if we want to display the package, we can see um, it is executed. And if we look at the elements, there's the module I changed as long, along with the manifest that have moved forward. So the SBOM went with it. And uh, at this point, let's, um, let's have a look at how, what this might look like if we wanted to drive this from a, a modern interface like Jenkins, as opposed to a uh, green screen. I mean, it's the, it's the same pipeline, it's the same um, processors and processor utilities doing the work, but you can always call these things from Jenkins if you want, and then maybe do additional things like capture artifacts and have a nice interface. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another change, same element. And uh, once I've generated this, I've made my change. I'm going to go in. I've got to, of course, uh, redo the um, manifest. So let's, let's generate the manifest like before. And in actual fact, if I forgot to do this, our pipeline will do it. But um, let's go ahead and do it anyways. There we go. We are generating the manifest. And now we can switch over to Jenkins and run our pipeline. And it should basically do the same uh, work. Okay, so... Let's, uh, let's click into the Jenkins interface. And you can see uh, a, a number of pipelines have been run, but I'm gonna kick off a new one. Uh, so we'll submit uh, our build. And there's a number of different parameters for this build, but they're pre-populated. And um, now you can see that the pipeline's running, but I'm actually, bef before we go further, I'm gonna switch over to um, what's called the blue ocean view so that we can see uh, I, a nicer representation of the pipeline. You can see now that it's running the setup steps. Uh, it's going to generate S bombs and uh, various other steps, uh, which we'll look at in a second, but we're going to let this run. Okay, so the build uh, and is complete as well as the uh, generation of the S bombs. And you can see we've actually paused our pipeline here for a manual testing step. And, you know, that's to represent a manual testing, but also to give me a chance to put on my uh, other developer slash bad actor hat and make another change to slick PD. So in other words, invalidate the S bomb. And we'll see once again that uh, just like before that um, Endeavor's uh, move processor is going to stop um, the pipeline from going forward, um, you know, even though it's being executed by Jenkins. So we've created our change. And the difference here, I mean, it's uh, executing the exact same um, uh, generate the processors, the policy check and whatnot. The only difference here is just to show you a modern way of uh, initiating and monitoring this. And just to also show you what you can do with Jenkins to capture some of the um, artifacts uh, after the policy check. Um, so there's the policy check step. Uh, and it's actually, you can see in there, it's using a Zoe command to do a move as part of the policy, and that's going to invoke the processor. 
uh, which does the policy checks, and then we'll do one final look at the policies in the pipeline to see um, if we should proceed to the final deploy phase, which of course we expect to fail. And there we go, it's failed uh, as uh, predicted. So let's go over now, um, let's go over now to the artifacts tab. And right here you can see, this is a cool thing that Jenkins has grabbed the artifacts, including the SBOM and the um, signature that uh, shows that the SBOM is tamper-proof. It's been cryptographically signed. Uh, and you can see it's the same data that we were collecting uh, before, except it's on a handy tab. And we also have some uh, X-Unit formatted tests. So we, you can see here, actually, the policy checks are being exposed as a, a test that's also captured in Jenkins uh, for traceability. And you can see that we have that merge, version mismatch uh, that we had. But what's interesting here is we also built the front end. And in it, we used um, a tool called uh, Gripe to do a, a live query to the national uh, database of um, vulnerabilities. And it found a couple. So that's kind of just showing you know, why standards are important, because we can use open tools like Gripe or like this one here that I'm showing you now called Dependency Track, where the SBOMs have been loaded and you can see, you know, there's all the different components. Uh, so tools like this can help when, you know, you have fire drills like uh, Log4j had us all do, where we had to find out where this software is. You can, you can read the SBOMs, consume the SBOMs and find vulnerabilities quite easily.